They're my biggest wish list. This I definitely don't think is going to happen, but this would change the game. This by far would eliminate like all competition is if they finally released a pro format for video recording on a phone. Apple makes ProRes. ProRes, if you don't know, ProRes, ProRes HQ, that codec that you see on professional grade cameras is made by Apple. And so I can't imagine it would be terribly, terribly complicated for them to integrate a version, maybe like ProRes Lite or something. But man, that would completely change the game because I always talk about how bitrate needs to be higher in order to get better, better quality images out of the phones. And it will just be less, uh, you know, you get less blocking and, and just better bit rates overall, just more detail. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So if you're looking for an all-encompassing kind of highlight reel of what today's event was all about, this really isn't the video for you. But if you're interested in talking about the latest and greatest features for mobile cinematography, then you want to stick around. By the way, as you can see, I'm not in my traditional setup because everything is a complete mess down here because between commercial work, YouTube, this is the crazy season for content creation. It needs a little clean up everywhere. But anyway, at today's event, we got a lot of cool new things. Uh, the iPad mini had a really nice update. We got the Apple Watch Series 7 and even the basic iPhone 13, which really set the stage for the Pro phone. And what I mean by that is while they were talking about the iPhone 13, they introduced something called cinematic mode. Now I was super excited when they announced cinematic mode on the basic phone because I knew that some really cool things were in store for video on the Pro model. And Apple really didn't disappoint this year. A couple years ago, they really focused on a bunch of new features for photography. Last year, I was kind of let down in terms of new video features. And this year, they really really went all out. So let's go back to the cinematic mode. So they talked about how in Hollywood or films, you're gonna see something called racking focus, which is basically just on a normal camera, you have really nice depth of field like this. And let's say another character walked into frame. Let's just say this little light stand right here was another person. Then a rack of focus uh, would be like if I was talking to camera or the person, and then the focus would go back to them and then maybe come back to me. I've actually tried to do something similar on multiple phones in my how to use whatever phone as a cinema camera. And I remember specifically with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, I did this because it had a really nice um, kind of fluid motion for its focus. But here Apple takes it a step further. So in cinematic mode, you're essentially going to get a really nice smooth transition in between your focus points. And you can simply tap on the subjects you want to change it to. But maybe you're not even recognizing what you want in focus uh, at the time of recording. But since Apple cameras already have that like depth mapping technology already built in, which they use to do their portrait modes. Now they're going to allow you to change the focus after the fact. So after you shot a video, you're going to be able to go in and essentially change the aperture. It's not actually changing the physical mechanics of the aperture on the lens but it's basically doing a digital kind of software version. So if you want to mimic a f2.8 or if you want more things in focus, then you can go to like an f5.6, f8 and completely change the look of the video afterwards. This is huge and other Android phones have tried to mimic kind of the blurred background portrait mode for video. And obviously we'll have to wait and see for how well it actually looks, but at least from a like settings standpoint, it's nice to see that you can specifically choose which aperture you would like. And again, the fact that you can do it afterwards is really cool. Cinematic mode is available both on the main wide sensor as well as the brand new 77 millimeter telephoto. This is now a 3X rather than the 65 millimeter 2.5 X telephoto lens from last year. Personally, I like the 65, but 77 I'm sure is good too. Now, if you think the ultra wide is just kind of a useless lens as it was this past year, not anymore because now they have a brand new macro mode. On this lens, you can be a whopping two centimeters away from the subject and be in focus. What this is going to allow you to do is mimic the same look that the Laowa 24 millimeter probe lens gives you where you can be ultra close up to something to where it's a macro shot, but it being an ultra wide angle lens allows you to still see the world rather than a traditional macro lens 
which is very close up on the subject and then everything is really blurred out and kind of compressed into the image. You don't really see the surrounding area. So we're about to see a whole new influx of images and videos of people who are rarely close up to a subject, but still seeing that wide field of view of the world. And personally, I'm really excited. Each of the lenses now is even better in low light, it's going to be less noisy and capture more detail and be brighter. Obviously, we'll have to see how this actually looks beyond their marketing photos, but it's definitely a welcomed bump up from last year as I never used the ultra wide angle lens in relatively low light situations and even the telephoto was pretty rough. One last thing on low light situations, they did bring night mode to each of the cameras now. So whether you wanna shoot the ultra wide, the regular wide or the telephoto, you now have night mode available. They also introduced Smart HDR4, which is basically their next generation of post-processing for HDR imagery. So hopefully it's gonna be even better in those complex situations where you may have a backlit scene where you know your face is darker, but then now you don't wanna blow out the sky and so everything's gonna be evenly exposed. All right, so now let's talk about the biggest feature, bigger than everything else I just talked about, and that is ProRes. If you saw my live stream from this morning, I literally named the live stream like my wish list. That's probably like not going to ever happen, but I still want it anyway. And what I talked about during that live stream was how I want Apple to be the first company to bring a professional codec to a mobile phone. And they they listened. But seriously, I know the average person is not going to care about this at all. And if they ever accidentally turn it on, they're going to wonder why their phone is filling up in like 20 minutes of video recording. But for someone like me, this is huge. This is next level. This is the first time in probably five years that I've seen a video feature of a phone finally break the glass ceiling into the next level of mobile cinematography. Every single time a new phone comes out, it's got better hardware, better glass, better sensors, better post-processing, but the crutch of them all is the highly compressed mobile codecs that every camera phone shoots in. Crazy low bit rates, which creates really bad banding and really kind of mushy artifacting. And so even though it's not gonna be right at release and they say it's fall, so it's probably gonna be like December 25th when they finally uh, release the update. And might I add that it is still 10-bit Dolby Vision. So 10-bit Dolby Vision already looked so good. So yeah, am I calling right now that the iPhone 13 Pro is going to be the best camera for video cinematography. Yeah, I'm calling it right now. And if I totally eat my words in a couple months when it comes out and it totally is subpar, fine, I'll do that. But for now, I'm calling it this phone is going to change the game. It's definitely a good thing that they're now offering a one terabyte version of the phone because uh, yeah, ProRes is going to take up quite a bit of space. And you all best believe that I'll be doing something extra special for this phone release and once ProRes comes out whenever it does. So definitely make sure you're subscribed for more content. Again, I know we didn't talk about the other features of the phone, like the new 120 hertz display. Personally, I don't really care. I use 120 hertz uh, displays on my Samsung and OnePlus devices all the time. It's nice, I don't hate it, but I also don't really care. But if you do, I'm happy for you. 120 hertz is finally on an iPhone. Now, even though this entire video I've been talking how excited I am, I do need to end this on two pretty big cons for me. The first one is no USB type C. Honestly, I don't get it. Seems like the most obvious, like I thought we would get USB type C before we ever saw ProRes on the iPhone. They updated their iPad mini to C. I mean, they, every other, like Max iPads, everything is USB type C. And I realize that iPhone is their largest market, but Apple, guess what? It's gonna sting no matter when you do it. You're gonna have people who are mad at you for changing the port at any point, whether it's this year, next year, or five years from now. Please just rip off the Band-Aid and then put, I don't care, put the pressure on us techie people to educate everyone else and be like, hey, you know that Android tablet or that Windows PC that you also carry? Wouldn't it be nice to have one cable that can charge all your devices? Like, put the education pressure on us we will happily take it on. Just give us a USB-C phone. Like, mm. that one That one really hurt, but ProRes made up for it. And then the second one, going back to the video, is tone mapping. If you don't know what tone mapping is, that is a feature they announced last year or maybe the year before, basically where the sensor kind of 
auto exposes for the best like skin tones or just tones in an image. And in the stock camera app, it works really well. If you're taking a video and you pan around the room or someone walks into shot, it will kind of adjust the exposure as normal. But where it makes absolutely no sense is in a third party app like Filmic Pro, where you completely set up your perfect exposure manually, choose your own ISO, shutter speed, all that stuff. But the third party app cannot bypass tone mapping. And so you get these very weird flickers and the only way to not get it is to turn off HDR, which takes away 10 bit and all of the beautiful looks of that. So that sucked. And so while nothing was specifically mentioned about it today, I am nervous that if I, you know, get this amazing 10 bit Dolby Vision ProRes footage, but it still does the flickering and the tone mapping. Oh, and the terrible lens flares. Hey, you see that? See those lines from these light sources? how bad that is. Obviously they're not gonna be like, hey, remember our terrible lens flares, we fixed that. So I am just hoping that it's new glass, new sensors and all that, and it got rid of that, but I'm nervous for those couple things. So only time will tell. We will see on the 24th for most of it and then later in the year for ProRes. But needless to say, I am super stoked. I think this was a fantastic year for mobile cinematography for iPhones. And yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. See you in the next video.